Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Tonight on Q2, they're back. They haven't hit the skies over Billings in more than two decades, but we'll let you know when the Blue Angels are coming back to the big sky. Plus, the wheels are turning when it comes to your kids' safety in school zones. But the number of citations for speeding past school buses may surprise you. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, it's likely something you never think about. Is this sidewalk wide enough for my wheelchair? Or will this car wait for me to cross the street? But it's something 11% of our Billings community live with each day. Accessibility challenges. In tonight's Two Americas report, Q2's Andrea Lutz checks in on Americans with Disabilities compliance in our city and learns there's still room for improvement. In just about any intersection in the city of Billings, you could probably pick out a few different issues when it comes to ADA compliance. And while the city of Billings is trying really hard to make up for those issues and fix them, we're learning it doesn't just fall on city government. In fact, it takes us all. Now that the snow and ice is here, another reminder of just how important accessibility is. But before the snow fell, a few months back under Skypoint in downtown Billings, Emily Schumann uses an eagle eye to pinpoint what's working and what's not. We always say that the ADA is a minimum standard. She's with the Rocky Mountain ADA Center. We really just help people understand what their responsibilities are under the ADA. From width and slope of sidewalks. Stuff like this, you see, you see a lot. To traffic signals, there's a compliance standard for all of it. If we just measure off the ground here, we're sitting at about 21 inches. So you would need to move this sign all the way up here. Like this accessible sign, it's too low and it should be higher. Assuming that, you know, these city spaces are owned and operated by the city, it would be the city's responsibility. And in the same space, there's blockage in the access aisle. So that's where they would get out and they'd have to roll into the access aisle, but then there's, there's now an obstruction right in front of where they would be. After taking in all of Emily's insights, we enlisted the help of Caitlin Baker. I have as much right away as a pedestrian. She lives with mild cerebral palsy and knows firsthand the struggle sometimes just getting around town can just be. From cracks in the sidewalk that could make her wheelchair tip to construction barriers without accessibility in mind, she rolls through all of it. But perhaps her biggest complaint? Crosswalks that aren't timed long enough. In those moments, she's forced to ask herself if the approaching car will even give her enough room to cross. We, we've got a ways to go. Director of Public Works Debbie Melling says the city spends roughly $400,000 a year on improvements to accessibility. I will say that since about um, the late 90s, we have built everything to an accessible standard. So we aren't falling behind. We're definitely catching up. And it's money that's not coming from the federal government. It is paid for through the local budget with money from the gas tax. Um, 24th was one we did a couple of years ago. We had someone on 24th. It had sidewalk, but every drive approach tipped into the street. It, it was not a very accessible sidewalk. And so we had someone that lived there and said that's the only way they got around. And so we went and rebuilt those this last year. She says 10 intersections are redone every single year and on tap for next year, retrofitting traffic signals with audible tones for the deaf and blind. I actually think Billings is in pretty good shape. It's that being said, there's 800 miles of roads and uh, we're not anywhere close to actually catching them all yet. But the truest test of what's really working comes from those like Caitlin, as she tries to maneuver her wheelchair through this column and a construction fence, it's easy to see why. Things like that, it's really helpful to be aware of. You know, like I said, a lot of this um, stuff that humans do, right, things that change, um, things that people put in place can take something that was perfectly accessible to begin with and make it inaccessible. And remember, when the snow falls, get your shovel out because it might make all the difference to Caitlin. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. New information tonight regarding the suspicious death of a man under the rims near North 14th Street on Monday. That includes one man held in custody.
The 54-year-old male has now been identified as Wade Scott from Billings. Billings police originally said Scott was from Washington, but it has since been determined he lived in Billings but had a Washington driver's license. Well, the cause of death is still undetermined pending further investigation, but a warrant for felony theft has been issued for 27-year-old Michael Kelsey. Kelsey allegedly stole Scott's car. He is currently in custody in Casper, Wyoming, for an incident that happened in that area on Tuesday morning. The investigation remains ongoing, and Billings detectives are working closely with Casper police regarding the incidents. A national social media threat will lead to increased police presence around all Billings and Lockwood schools tomorrow. Superintendent Greg Upham says the troubling post has been shared widely on TikTok and refers to a threat for school safety tomorrow for every school in the USA, even elementary. The post appears to be part of a national TikTok trend and did not originate in the Billings School District. As of now, Upham says they do not believe the threat to be credible, but they are taking it seriously. Last week, we told you about one Billings family's frustrations when it comes to traffic. Cars flying past their daughter's school bus. Tonight, an MTN update. We're learning more on just how many of those drivers are issued citations, and we're hearing from a former crossing guard who says it happens all the time. You've probably seen it before, a car illegally passing a stop school bus as a kid is being picked up. It's just sad that people, people don't care about running over kids. Ken Carlson has seen it happen more times than he can count. Not only was he a crossing guard for three years. People pass me and I, and I'd write him up and turn him into the police. He also drove a school bus for seven years. As a driver, he made it a point to record the license plate numbers of drivers who broke the law. On average, I think I wrote up about 40 people a year. Even taking those drivers to court. Three people in my first year fought it and I went to court as a witness and I won all three cases. But Ken has had enough. He's fed up and frustrated that more hasn't been done to stop these reckless drivers. The Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office tells MTN not one citation was issued in either 2020 or 2021 for failing to stop for a school bus. And the Billings Police Department only issued seven school bus related citations in both 2020 and 2021. That's scary. Ken says he did what he could to curb the problem, even placing homemade signs at the corner of St. John's and 11th West. I had signs out here, for slow signs at first and stop signs, and it was all working. But he says there's only so much one person can do. And just like this family we introduced to you last week. I hope people will start slowing down and paying attention to the buses. Carlson is worried. It's only a matter of time until the problem turns deadly. If you hit a kid, kill them or not, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ruin your life. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Well, now toss it over to Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Yesterday it was the snow, Ed, but tonight it is the cold and the snow. Janelle, you can tell we're starting to talk about really cold air once we start talking about wind chill values. And that's going to be the big story as we get into the next couple of days. As cold as 35 below, which means those early signs of frostbite start to set in rather early. And regionally, this is how it'll set up as we start getting into the evening and overnight hours of tonight. A cold front sinks down across the region, and this fast-moving clipper will bring an initial shot of some snow showers. But in behind it, the blue arrows indicate where the cold air sinks in behind and the wind chills start to sink and the temperatures also continue to sink. In fact, through the day tomorrow, it will get colder and colder. We'll take a look at the complete seven day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. For the first time since 2000, an event featuring military aircraft will be coming to Billings. In 2023, the Blue Angels will be performing out at the airport. And the organizers made that announcement this afternoon. The Blue Angels make 32 appearances each year, and the plan is for a crew to perform out of Billings Logan International Airport. Admiral Chester Nimitz started the U.S. Navy's Blue Angels in 1946. And those putting the Yellowstone International Air Show together say military air shows have been here in 1988 and 2000. And those shows, including the Big Sky Air Show, inspired the upcoming exhibition. 
And it really what we are, honestly, is honoring that past um, and what we saw and what we saw as kids and honoring the advisory roles of people that put this together and then we'll be forging the future. So hopefully we'll get to give that same gift that we got as kids seeing these jets and, and you never forget, I promise you, you yeah. know, they'll never forget. Definitely want to honor the military, uh, current and past and future military members. And, uh, and then, uh, so we have uh, military, uh, kids and education. And you look at it and you go, wow, that's amazing. How does that airplane fly? And when you get to see it, it's it just it, something just hits you to the core of your being. And um, that's what an air show does. The Blue Angels are scheduled to be in Billings on August 12th and 13th in 2023. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Still to come on your MTN 530 News here on Q2, the state's conversion to a new voter database may now get delayed. We'll tell you why. And in sports, one of Butte's own looks to lead the Bobcats to their first FCS national title since 1984. The MTN 530 News continues right after this. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. Several weeks ago, local election officials reported concerns about Montana converting to a new voter database before the system had been properly vetted. Well, today, Secretary of State Christy Jacobson, who's in charge of the project, hinted that that implementation may now be delayed. MTN's Mike Dennison reports. Last month, election administrators who've been helping test the new voter database told a legislative committee they were worried the state's chief election officer, Christy Jacobson, might launch the system before it was ready. But on Thursday, Jacobson, her staff, and the county officials who had concerns assured the panel that's not going to happen. Jacobson and the project leader, Stuart Fuller, said the call on whether to go live with the new system will be made on Monday after conferring with staff, local officials, and the company developing it. If on the 20th, and we, after we've reviewed all of the criteria, that if the system is not ready, we will not go live because it's not ready. And we will work then for what the next steps are with this system. The new database called Elect MT is replacing a 15-year-old system called Montana Votes. The database is used by all 56 county election offices to do things like prepare absentee ballots, check signatures on those ballots, or make sure voters aren't registered in more than one location. We want to make sure, absolutely, that it is working correctly. We're issuing ballots correctly, we're able to return ballots, we're able to manage the election process through the system. Testing of the new system has been underway this month, and on Thursday, Cascade County Election Administrator Rena Fontana Moore said the system still has some bugs and is not yet ready to launch. I think I can say that we're in agreement that it is a, it's going to be a fantastic program when it is ready, but right now, as far as the elections administrators are concerned, it is not ready. If the go live decision is delayed next week, Fuller said the state will continue to use the old system for 2022 elections and continue to get elect MT ready for the next year. Jacobson also assured lawmakers that both she and county officials are on the same page when it comes to the voter database and getting the new system in place. We can all agree that our common goal is to modernize and secure our elections, and this system is the best way to do that. It sounds like the decision next Monday is all but made. Election MT will be delayed. And lawmakers and election officials made it clear Thursday they want to continue Montana's record of secure, accurate elections. Reporting from the Capitol, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Coming up in weather, Ed says it's time to brace for the cold this weekend. But just how cold will it get? He'll let us know right after this. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.